All right, so we're looking at 5.2, section 5.2 today, the addition rule and complements. All right, two events are disjoint if they have no outcomes in common. Also called mutually exclusive events. So mutually exclusive and disjoint are the same thing. I'm trying to give you a chance to write. Once again, if I scroll up too quick, let me know. So the additional rule for disjoint events, if E and F are disjoint, or, or in other words, mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive, um, then when you look at the probability of E or F happening, you would just add the probabilities together. All right, everybody down with the purple. All right, so deck of cards. We start dealing with a deck of cards. And uh, before we can actually uh, do work with them or do examples with them, want to make sure we understand, um, you know, house rules. You know, if we're looking at a standard 52 card deck, calling it standard, it means no jokers are involved. Uh, you have four suits, spades, clubs, diamonds, and hearts. Two black suits, spades, and clubs. Two red suits, diamonds, and hearts. Um, you have 13 cards in each suit. You know, that's why you have 52, four times 13. You have three face cards and 10 regular cards. Excuse me. Face cards, king, queen, and jack. And then your 10 regular cards is the ace and then two through 10. So your ace is not a face card. Ace is not a face card. All right, so let's use an example um, dealing with a 52 card uh, deck, standard 52 card deck. Suppose a single card is selected from a standard 52 card deck. Compute the probability of drawing a king, then compute the probability of drawing a king, queen, or jack.
All right. So remember when we're dealing with probability, you establish your sample space first. So the number of our sample space is 52. That's the total uh, number of possibilities, total number of cards that we have in the deck. So we don't have to list them out, but we need a number. And like I said, that's 52. And then the number of kings in the deck. There's no, going to be four, remember there's one king for each suit. So we have four kings. Once you establish that, then you would take the four, place it over 52, and simplify if possible. And in this case, we see we have one over 13, so we got a one out of 13 chance of getting a king. Any questions on that? All right. So the next ones, or the next one, uh, when you're looking at drawing, uh, we're looking at B. Oh. Right here, compute the probability of drawing a king, queen, or jack. A just wanted to know the probability of drawing a king. B wants to know the probability of drawing a king, queen, or jack. So first thing you need to establish or ask yourself, are they mutually exclusive events? So uh, in other words, do they have any cards in common? So there are four kings, four queens, and four jacks. There is no such thing as a king and a queen or a jack and a queen or a jack and a king. So they are mutually exclusive, excuse me, mutually exclusive. They have no cards in common. All right, so that's what I said in the red right here. These events are mutually exclusive or in other words, disjoint and they do not have any cards in common. So since that's the case, the way we would proceed is finding the probability finding the probability of each one of them individually. And it just so happens that uh, for all three of them, they're the same because there are four kings in the deck, four queens in the deck, and four jacks in the deck. But um, even if there weren't, this would be the process. You know, you would go through finding the probability of each one of them individually. Um, the sample space for each is 52. And once again, there are four of each in the deck. And so four over 52 would be the probability of each. Now, according to our additional rule for mutually exclusive events, you would just go ahead and add them together. So if you're talking about the probability of getting a king or a queen or a jack, add the probability, probability together. We get 12 over 52 and I can reduce by four and that leaves me with three over 13. Any questions? All right. Did 
ठीक है All right, looking at the next one, a single die is tossed. Find the probability of rolling a number less than three or greater than three. Um, I don't want to leave that like that. Um, I guess so. So once again, a single die is tossed. Find the probability of rolling a number uh, less than three or greater than three. So establish your sample space. This is what we did here. Remember, that's always your first move. There are six faces on the die, you know, one through six. So the number of outcomes would be six. Number of outcomes in the sample space is six. Oh, also remember we wanted to establish um, all the mutually exclusive events. So values that are less than three and values that are greater than three, none of those have anything in common. Like you can't be less than three and greater than three at the same time. So these are mutually exclusive events. They do not have any numbers that will be in common. So, um, so we can proceed um, the same way we did with the cards when you find a probability of each individually. So you're looking at the numbers of uh, the numbers that are less than three, you're talking about one and two. So there are two numbers that are less than three. And so we put that two over six. And over here, numbers that are greater than three There are three numbers that are greater than three, four, five, and six. That would be three over six. So we add a two over six and the three over six together. And that's five over six. All right, any questions for you? Move up. All right, so the general addition rule. This is for even if you have events that are not mutually exclusive. In other words, they do have something in common. We have an extra piece. So if we have uh, we want to find a probability of E or F occurring, you would take the probability of E plus the probability of F and subtract the probability of E and F. And so that's what they have in common, what E and F have in common. And you'll see why that has to happen. But this part is not a part of the calculation when you have mutually exclusive events because they don't have anything in common. So that would just be zero. So that's why that piece is there now because we're looking at the general rule for your events. No, I think it be. All right, any questions for us? Go up. So the next one, 
a single die is tossed, find the probability of rolling an even number or a number less than five. Give you a few seconds to write that. All right, so the sample space, as before, is going to be six because we're dealing with a single die. So that's right here, sample space is six. Now, if you're talking about even numbers, there are three even numbers, two, four, and six. So the probability of getting an even number is three over six. All right. Now the probability of getting a number less than five is four over six. It's right here. Let me erase these boxes though. All right, so we have our, like I said, we have our even number probability right here, our less than five probability right here. Notice that these events, events are not disjoint. because they have two numbers that are in common. They have two and four that are in common. So that's what I did over here in the orange. Since they are not just disjoint, we need to find a probability of getting a number that's even and less than five. And so that's why we did this right here. Make sure we are right before I go any further. All right, any problems, any problems? So we got four over six, three over six, and two over six. So put them in the formula. Probability of E, E was even number for us. L was less than five. So that's three over six plus four over six, and then minus two over six, which is for, uh, we're talking about even and less than, and that'll be five over six as our probability. So going back to why this has to happen, why do we have to subtract the probability of the two numbers that we have in common? And that's because if you do not recognize that in this probability, two over four is counted, but in this probability, two over four is counted as well. So you actually counted two over four twice in your calculations. So if you were to just add these two together, that would actually give you 
seven over six. And remember, our probabilities can't be larger than one anyway. So we should know something is wrong in this case. But the reason that is occurring is because two and four is being counted twice. So that's why you have to subtract what they have in common at least one time. Well, I want to say at least one time. You need to subtract it that one time so that it's only counted once. <clears throat> All right, any questions? All right, so here a single card is drawn from a standard 52 card deck. Compute the probability of the events of the of the events of drawing a king or or drawing a diamond. Compute probability of the events. Okay, I got it. Compute probability of events of drawing a king or drawing a diamond. All right, so just like before, you want to ask yourself, are the events mutually exclusive or disjoint? And the answer is no, because there is such thing as the king of diamonds. All right, that means the king, being the king and being a diamond has at least this one card in common, the king of diamonds. So it is possible to be a king and it's possible to be a diamond at the same time. So this is how we would find the probability of each one of our three categories. So we have the king, we've calculated finding the probability of king a couple of times already. Um, so, you know, first of all, a sample space is 52, 52 cards. There are four cards and four kings in the deck, and that's four over 52. Then we're looking at the diamonds. Once again, our sample space is 52, but there are 13 diamonds in the deck. So it's 13 over 52. And then the king of diamonds, there's only one king of diamonds, being a king and being a diamond. So that'd be one over 52 as our probability. All right, any questions before I scroll up? All right, so then we put it in the formula. We want to know the probability of being a king or a diamond. So you add the probability of king plus the probability of diamond minus the probability of being a king and a diamond. 
So that's 4 over 52 plus 13 over 52 minus 1 over 52. And that'll give us 16 over 52. Cancel out the fours that they have in common with both. And that'll be 4 over 13. Any questions? Any questions? All right, questions before we look at the compliment. All right. So your compliment, the compliment of an event, all outcomes in the sample space that are not in the event. So E with that superscript C is a complement of event E. All right. So your complement rule can be recognized a couple of different ways. If you want to know the complement of E, you can um, subtract it. Well, if you want to know the probability of the complement of E, but you have the complement, the probability of E, you can subtract that from one. If you want to know the prob probability of your event, but you have the probability of your complement, you can subtract that from one. Or you can just recognize as well that the probability of E, which is your event, plus the probability of your complement, which is everything that's not your event, when you add those probabilities together, they should add up to give you one. So that's what those three things say. I don't know why this error over here, probably something I was pointing out before. All right, so according to the National Gambling Impact Study Commission, 52% of Americans have played state lotteries. What is the probability that a randomly selected American has not played a state lottery? Thank you. 
<clears throat> so we want to know uh, what's the probability that someone has not played. They give us the probability that someone has played, which is 52%, and 52% as a, a decimal is 0.52. So to find the probability of someone who has not played, you would just subtract that from one. That goes back to our complement rule, our complement relationship. So one minus 0.52 is 0.48, or in other words, 48%. Any questions? All right, scrolling up. Um, let's see. So I'm going to give you guys uh, one more chance to uh, get into uh, chapter four and knock that stuff out. So we won't do five, three today, but, but yep, want to give you guys another opportunity to get into four before we uh, start pressing forward, you know, legitimately. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we did one section last class, which is five, one, one section today is five, two. Uh, next thing you know, we'll be in chapter six. You know, we could have uh, <laughs> be almost there right now. Uh, so be careful with it. You know, you want to keep pace and um, knock this stuff out as soon as you can. Um, questions, concerns, or comments before let's y'all for the weekend. Everybody good? All right. Well, you guys take care. Have a great day and great weekend. And I will see you on Monday. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.